Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to focus on the workflow for assigning a single plate connection template to a beam splice and a column splice joint in RAM connection standalone for the purposes of resisting a shear reaction. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in RAM connection standalone. And for this video, we're going to be focusing on joint number eight and joint number nine, which are a beam splice and a column splice joint respectively. Let's start with joint number eight, which is a beam splice. Now in this particular beam splice, you're going to notice that the, both the right beam and the left beam are I-shaped sections, although they are not of the same size or depth um, as each other. When you're ready to assign a connection template to this joint, you can go up to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Now the beam splice single plate connection is available as both a basic connection or a smart connection. I'm going to go to the basic connection workflow and I'm looking for the acronym SP, but I also want it to say beam splice in it. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down until I see the BSSP. So you can see here, this is a basic beam splice single plate connection type. RAM Connection has successfully found a template to work for this joint. And if I take a look in the joint selection area, I would see that the interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and the indicator light is in green, meaning no errors or warnings were produced during this connection design. If I would like to review this information a little further, I can click on the edit icon and then edit the shear connection. Now within the connection pad for a beam splice, connection, I have a couple of additional options that I have available here. First of all, in the configuration for the members, I can see that the default is for the top of the beams within the splicer to be flush, but I could also tell the program I would prefer it to be centered, which you can see there, what it'll do is it'll move the, the shallower beam down a little bit. I'm going to go back to the original, original configuration for that. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the connector information. So here it went with a single plate. So if I were to spin this around, I wouldn't see a plate on the other side. I do have an option to go with a double plate. So if you felt like you needed a little additional capacity, you can put a plate on either side as well. Now, again, you can focus on the detailing of the plate. You can do whether or not you want it centered or at the top or bottom of the splice and you can also customize the plate thickness and material. Once we get down to the left side beam, we can see that we can customize the bolts that are being used, the quantity of bolts, the size and type of bolts, as long with the spacing and hole types that would be used in this connection. If you would like to review the detailing, you can click on this DXF tab where you would see the detailing of this particular joint, and you can export this for your detailing purposes. If I would like to review the connection report and come up to the ribbon toolbar and click on the results icon and here I'd be able to see all the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. If I would like some additional information regarding the calculations, I can click on the view formulas icon to see all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Now at this point, I didn't make any changes within the connection pad. So I can feel safe just closing out of the connection pad without saving any changes. That'll bring me to the default position in case I did make any changes while I was there. Let's go ahead and also take a look at joint number nine. Now this is a column splice joint. Both the top column and the bottom column are both I-shaped sections, although they are of different sizes and depths. Let's again go with a single plate splice connection. I'm gonna go with a connection design workflow again. So I'm gonna click on the assign icon, go to basic connection. I'm gonna find my splices towards the bottom of this list. So I'm looking for the acronym CS for column splice and SP for single plate. 
Just go ahead and select that option and then click close. Now, if I take a look in the joint selection area, I would see that the status of the connection is indicated. And unfortunately for this one, it is indicated in yellow, meaning I did produce a, a warning. If I take a look at this 3D view, I'm, I have a pretty good idea of what produced that warning. My plate is actually not fitting on my columns. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that manually. So I can go up to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, click on the Edit icon, and then, of course, this is a shear connection, so I'm going to say I want to edit my shear connection. Let me go ahead and scroll on down and see some of the parameters that I might be able to, to modify for this joint. So the first thing I'm going to see is that my connector is not fitting. So I'm going to try to reduce the number of, of bolts. So for bolt columns, instead of five, let's try to shrink that down to three. And when we do that, unfortunately, that puts us up into a failing situation. My interaction ratio is greater than 1.0. It's in red. So right now, it's not doing so great. So what I'm going to do is instead of increasing the number of columns, I can also increase the number of rows of bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just say add an additional row of bolts. That's uh, not doing so great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also say I want to add a doubler plate and I'm going to try to adjust my bolt size. Here I'm going to go with a 325 end bolts. I'm going to go with three quarter inch diameter bolts. Now as I take a look at this connection design, I can spin it around. I could take a look to see, to see what that looks like. I have a plate on both sides. I have six bolts on each side and everything is fitting correctly and passing the code checks. Again, if I wanted some additional information, I can go to my connection report and review all of the design checks and geometric considerations that were performed. Now, since I did make changes and these changes are better than the initial connection design, I'm going to go ahead and click on the save icon to save it to this joint, and then I can close out of the connection pad. Immediately, we can see that the joint selection area has been updated for the status of this new connection design that we customized. At this point, this concludes our process for designing a single plate splice connection to both a beam splice and a column splice joint within RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.